Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how we can create a cool portal effect to another dimension inside of GIMP. So we're going to start off this process by having two images brought into GIMP. We have the image that's going to serve as the portal layer, and then we have another image that is going to be where we put the portal onto. So we're going to basically put it right in the middle here on this wall. So with the portal image layer, and I suppose I'll go and rename these layers now. So portal image, and then over here, I'll call it wall background image. But with the portal image layer, I'm going to want to add a layer mask to that. So if we right click and do add layer mask, we are going to initialize the layer mask to full transparency. So check it as black, and it should go invisible temporarily. Next, we want to use the ellipse select tool in order to draw a rough shape of our portal. So we can just do that by left clicking and then drawing out an oval shape that is going to be roughly what you want the shape and size of the portal to be. Uh, don't worry about it making it too precise though, because we're going to play around with the perspective tool layer, which is going to change its size by a bit. So with that, we're going to want to do a paint bucket fill with a pure white color. So Change your foreground color to pure white, should have HTML notation FFF. And then we can do Shift B to do Paint Bucket Tool and fill that in right there, which gives us a portal on the wall. But this is going to have a very hard edge, like you can see there. So I'm going to change the foreground color to black, and we're going to go over to the Paint Brush Tool. And you're going to want to select a brush that has a hardness less than 100 so that we can take the edge here and smooth it out a bit so that it's not contrasting so hard against the wall there. So I'm going to right click on the layer mask for the portal image and choose mask to selection, which gives us a perfect ring selection of our portal there. And then we can right click and do edit, stroke selection, and then stroke with paintbrush tool, turn off brush dynamics, so emulate brush dynamics, uncheck that if it's checked, and then you can just do a stroke there. So that's going to take the portal on the wall, and the edge is now going to be smoothed out a lot. Now, while keeping this selection, I'm going to also add a new layer group, and I'm going to call it the portal group. And I'm going to create a new layer inside that group, and I'm going to call it the border layer. And then under the border layer, I'm going to drag the portal image layer beneath that. And then on the border layer, I'm going to change the composite mode to some composite mode that lets light through in a way we desire. So overlay is a good option there. Uh, linear light and some of these other ones are also worth trying. But you kind of have to see how it looks. But it's going to depend on exactly what look you're going for. So I'll start with overlay. And then we'll select a color that we want to paint uh, basically the border around this portal with. So I'm going to select something like a very vibrant orange. I'm also going to increase the size of this brush stroke to something like 70, because I want it to be larger than the transparency stroke we added to the underlying layer. And with the selection still there, I'm going to right click, edit, do stroke selection, and then stroke with the paintbrush tool again. So when we do that, if your composite mode is set to overlay, you should notice that what happens is that it does stroke it around with the orange color, but on the areas where there's actually background lighting, you can see how the border layer merges with the background layer in order to generate a cool effect there. If we were to hide the portal layer temporarily, you can see it's actually just a orange stroke all the way around with the low hardness brush. But as soon as we combine it with the border layer on top of it, we get a really cool border effect. So one thing I forgot to do earlier was to take the background image and actually reposition it to show exactly what I wanted from the original image. Um, so one way we can work around that is to actually reposition the layer mask for the portal image temporarily. So if we go over here to where there's a car in the street and we have this lane of traffic kind of going to where the portal exits here, I think that's pretty cool. So we'll use that for the portal image. And now if we click on the portal image layer, we, we can reposition it back over where the border layer is still at. And that's pretty much it. So that's one of the advantages to leaving the actual image there. We can always change the area we want to show if we ever decide we're unsatisfied with what's in the layer mask. So next it would be cool to add a background effect kind of uh, out of border for this portal. So I'm going to add in a new layer here. So this new layer should be below the portal image because it's going to be a background layer and we don't want it to show in front. And using the paintbrush tool, I found that a really cool brush to use for this. 
If we scroll down to the bottom on the default brushes, I believe it was Texture Hose 3. So with this, you can see if we do a few brush strokes, it gives almost like a fiery effect, and I think that works really well with this portal. So I'm going to shrink down the size quite dramatically. And on this new layer, we're going to draw a border around the outside until we basically get something we like. So I think just with a simple stroke like that, it actually looks pretty cool. So we'll just leave it like that for now. Uh, so now we're going to want to add some perspective to this portal so that it actually looks like it's properly sitting on the wall because the wall does have a curvature as it goes down in that circular fashion. So I'm going to take the portal group and duplicate it in case we decide we want to go back on this effect later on. I'm going to hide the copy and I guess I'll rename it backup. So we'll just hide that there for now. And now with portal group selected, I'm going to go to the perspective tool and we're going to left click on the screen. So what you should see is four corners that we can modify now in order to adjust the perspective here a bit. So we can drag on these corners, which is going to change the shape of how this portal looks. So if we adjust it, we can pretty much get it to look a little bit more like it actually belongs on the wall. So you just need to pull in the four corners until it looks like the perspective is a little bit better than just being straight front facing. And then you can hit transform. So next we could add some details to the portal, such as having a character, or in this case, a dog jump through the portal. So we'll take this dog, layer mask it out, and then have it look like it's jumping through the portal. So I'm going to make sure that that's a separate layer outside of that area. So we just need to separate the background from the dog here. Okay, so one way we can layer mask the dog out is going to be to use the scissor select tool to basically snip around the edges of the dog shape and then cut everything else away. So I'm going to use the scissor select tool and start drawing points around the shape here, making sure that whenever it goes off center, I add a new point with left click in between and then keep clicking in order to get a rough shape of the dog. So doing it with the scissors select tool is a little bit tedious, but uh, you often get decent results and then you can just clean up a bit with the brush and you can just clean up with the paintbrush layer to draw a little bit more detail of a layer mask. So when you've connected your scissors points back together, you can click inside to get a selection from that scissor select. And then with that, I can right click on the layer, add a layer mask, and I'll initialize it to full opacity. What I'm going to do is hit control I on the keyboard to invert the selection, and then I'm going to hit the delete key in order to remove everything else from the layer mask. So that will basically take care of the outside layer mask. There's just this little gap in here between the legs. So we'll take care of that by using brush strokes on the layer mask layer using paintbrush. And I'm going to lower the size down. And, and then I'm going to just kind of draw here until those areas become transparent. We're also going to want to make the mask a little bit smoother. So I'll right click on the layer mask again. I'll do mask to selection. And then we will stroke that mask with black brush at hardness 50. So I'll right click through edit stroke selection, um, paintbrush tool. Make sure the size is only a few pixels because we don't want to remove too much from the shape. And then stroke that. And then that should make it look a little bit better. And you can always go and do a little bit more fine tuning if you need here. Uh, in this case, we're going to be shrinking the dog down a lot as well. So. A lot of these little tiny details are going to be harder to see anyway. So next we need to shrink the dog. So I'm going to take that layer and we're going to shrink it with the scale tool. So let's shrink that until we get a size where it actually makes sense for the dog to be coming through. So right around there seems pretty okay. So let's finish the scale and uh, drag it into place. Now uh, when I was doing the masking out, Part of the original image there wasn't actually selected, but we can remove that from the layer mask really easily now by just doing a rectangular select on both the top and bottom. So let's just go ahead and take care of that real quick. Okay, so I'm going to reposition the dog a little bit more. And uh, what we'll do here is we'll take part of the dog's legs down here and ask, actually mask it out as well to give the illusion that the dog is currently jumping through the portal. 
and isn't all the way through yet. So I'll draw on the mask layer and we'll use the paintbrush again. So this back leg that is currently over the border of the portal, we're going to mask that out so that it looks like it's behind the portal. So zoom in, paintbrush tool, and kind of draw that out. I'll lower the brush hardness to 25 here, decrease the size a bit, just so that the edge here on this mask is a little bit softer, so it blends a little bit better with the background there. Next, what we can do to make the dog's lighting look a little bit closer to the portal behind it is to copy the portal image layer. So I'm going to right click on it and duplicate it, and then drag this above into the dog's layer group with a layer mode. So we'll do the overlay color composite mode. And what you'll see is that the color of the dog now kind of reflects whatever's behind in the background, but that's a bit too extreme. So I'm going to lower the opacity down on that overlay layer. So one final thing we could add here would be a shadow for the dog. So I'm going to duplicate the dog's layer with uh, right click duplicate layer. And then for this duplicated copy, I'm going to right click it and apply the layer mask so that we can properly do the shadow. Um, I'm going to right click the layer and do scale layer to image size. So with this dark copy layer, we can create a shadow for it by clicking on it, going up to filters, light and shadow, long shadow, and then changing it from composition shadow plus image to shadows only. For the length, I'm going to lower that way down to something like 8.7, let's say. And then I'm going to hit OK. And with the shadow layer, I'm going to put that behind the dark layer, and we're going to bring it down here on the ground and adjust it using the perspective tool so that it looks like a proper shadow. So taking the perspective tool, I'm going to click on that shadow layer, and we're going to adjust the four corners like we did with the portal to make it look like that shadow is on the ground. So you can always zoom in and take a look at it. Right there, it's a little too small, so we kind of have to bring this out a bit more. Okay, and uh, we might be able to call it roughly good there. I'll hit transform. Um, we can always adjust it manually a little bit more later with the move tool. Uh, we're going to want to take that shadow to the toe and lower the opacity down quite a bit because it's never going to cast a perfectly black shadow, of course. So something like a 30% opacity and then dragging it a little bit so that we get it in the position we want. And we can get a decent result like that. One more thing we could do is to take the fiery border from the portal and pull it outside of the portal group so that we can have it merge with the wall in the background a little bit better. So I'm going to pull that down here and we'll change the composite mode from normal to something else. So I'll just scroll through the list here a little bit and uh, find one where we can see some of the cement background. So overlay is a decent option there, but I actually like the idea of vivid light more here. So the brighter areas allow the flames to turn it a little bit yellow where the darker areas are going to be more in that red kind of tint. So that actually looks pretty sweet there. So that's pretty much going to be it for how we can create a cool portal effect inside of GIMP. Obviously, there's a lot of little ways we could tweak it here and there and kind of make it your own. But I hope that this tutorial has given you guys some ideas of how you can create your own portal effects. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video conference.